Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Moving Spotlight Podcast. I'm your host, John Ruby. I'm here with my main man, Corbin Coyle. Hey, everyone. Hello, everybody. It's Tank Top Monday. <laughs> That's right. If you're checking us out on YouTube, I'm in a tank top, which is rare. It's mm -hmm. hot here. I'll, so, I'll, lift, um, I'll just lift my shirt up. There yep, Corbin's right. lifting his shirt up. So everyone, <laughs> if you're listening on um, you know, Apple or whatever, go check out the YouTube. You get the visual. Um, our guest later will be taking his shirt off. He promised. Um, so, But before we get to him, I want to, Corbin, I want to ask you something. What is something that you are nostalgic about? Like what's something that you're like, oh man, back in the day, this is mm. something that we need to like, like I really loved or I, we need to bring back. I remember what? when I, I played baseball, Little League, there was like, yeah. there was this little like dug, like dug, right behind the dugout was this little stand where they sell a bunch of stuff. And did you ever have Big League Chew? Oh my mm. gosh, yes, I, Big League Chew. You would just go and you get a whole thing and you eat it all. You eat it all that whole yeah. game, right? Like you can't, yeah. you can't say Big League Chew. <laughs> no. So your whole no. cheek is like expanded. It's the best yeah. gum in the whole world. You know what I didn't realize? Did Do we realize that's a gateway to like chewing tobacco? Did anyone realize <laughs> oh, that at the time? I, I never thought I'm about that. I'm just realizing that now. <laughs> I, I never thought about it, but it's like, this is like probably the tobacco agency came yeah. up with that, right? The company's that's did. Like this, really, this, this, yeah. Yeah. What, I never even thought about it. You know what it. also makes me think of, have you ever had those candies that look like cigarettes? Like, what's the deal with that? Oh, yeah. I used to love those. I used to love those. Oh, yeah. My sister was a big fan of those. Yeah, we had those a lot in the house. Yeah. Um, uh, and she's a, she's a chronic smoker now. She's a chronic. No, she doesn't smoke. She doesn't smoke. She's, she's never smoked. Um, oh, I will say it is funny. This is actually funny. In high school, my parents bought me chew because a bunch of people were, chew, were like doing chew and they're like, they bought it for me. And the strategy actually worked because I, I did it with my buddies and I threw up. I was like, this was never too much. Again. Like I, and I was trying not to smoke. And then I was like, never again. You know what I mean? And um, my parents were like, our plan worked. <laughs> yeah, it was the weirdest yeah. thing. It was like that reverse psychology thing. We'll buy it for them. But it actually worked. Wow, yeah, that stuff crazy. is. My mom bought me heroin. So that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> no, not the same. No, not the same. Very different. <laughs> Very different. We're going to cut that out. We'll cut that out. Uh, one of the things I was nostalgic about when you said that and just thinking of candy, yeah. dude, I got to go back to Fun Dip. The oh, stick, that white stick, dip. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the pure sugar and then that you yeah. could eat that stick, which like, I don't even know what flavor it was, yeah, whatever the flavor it's was. Yeah, specific thing. That was the best. Oh my God. That was like, <laughs> that was one of the best things. When you when you had like a couple bucks to go to the candy store and get in there, mm -hmm. you know, and get what you wanted, that was, that was the best. So. <laughs> That's so good. Um, I love it. Well, yeah, if, if I want to see what our, who our guest has for like nostalgic candy yeah, or food or something. Too, yes. So I want to get to him right away. This is the talented actor, good buddy of mine from back in the day, but now currently, uh, Mike Wade. Mike, welcome to the show. Hey, bud. Mike. Hey, what's up? Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Any thoughts on um, uh, Big League Chew, Fun Dip, or your own edition? Man, first of all, uh, what you guys are saying with the... Uh, <laughs> the big chew. I was like, wow, that is like <laughs> that is like dip. And makes you think it's like basically preparing people <laughs> when they're older to yeah. Wow. Uh but for me, man, it's the um what are those things called? I think they're called hot fries. Oh, uh, it's I like a dude this. with like a red hat on with mm -hmm. his head back. Like, yeah. yeah. I think they still sell them today, but I remember having those when I was younger and Chico sticks and yes. all, all that kind of thing, man. Yeah, oh, so, yeah so and good. I remember some of the girls uh, at school. I, I remember this in elementary specifically. They would have like the big pickles, and they would put a like a peppermint, or like a you know what I mean, like candy inside. I know that's uh, yeah. I didn't. I don't know. Know, yeah, that I, I never heard of. What? <laughs> yeah, man. And I remember saying that. I didn't want to try it, but I specifically remember saying that. Very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no way oh, that's good, God. right? Yeah. <laughs> I, that's what I was thinking, but they always ate it. I remember them eating it. Oh, yeah, it was weird, man. I'm going to age myself here, and you guys probably don't remember this, but there used to be a drink called Zima. Cor Corbin, you never heard of Zima. I, ha have, I you? have heard of Zima. You have heard of Zima? Commercial. Yeah, okay, yeah. you remember the commercial. And what made me think of it, Mike, when you said this, I am flashing back now. People used to put Jolly Ranchers in the Zima to give it some flavor. That was like part of the thing. Yeah, they put Jolly Ranchers to give it some flavor. But I, we got to look up what happened to Zima. I have no idea. Probably I feel like that brand yeah, was yeah. around for like five years. And I just remember the guy with the hat and the, he had like a suit on too, right? That's <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, yeah, like yeah, burned right. into my brain. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, I never want to try that. <laughs> no, it was I not could. good. It was not. I don't even know what it what it was. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's hilarious. I love it. I love it. Well, Mike, I want to I want to uh, jump over to um, act. You know, we worked on a film um, a while back, uh, which yeah. was a really, really fun experience. But I want to jump to um, you uh, right now. So right now you're working on a show. 
Yeah, yeah. Right now, um, I'm starting my third season of SEAL Team. Okay. SEAL Team is starting at six. So, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's a show that I auditioned for, you know, quite a few times over the years. And thankfully to be working with the man. It's a really great group of people and, uh, you know, powerful storytelling. And, yeah, it's, it's really is a privilege. Wow. That's great. That's great. What's yeah. what's your what's your kind of role in it? What uh, what what are you part of like the team? Like what's what's going on with you, your character? Yeah, so my, my character, he's he's a SEAL, he's, but he's not necessarily part of the team. He's, he's their officer in charge, uh, Lieutenant okay. Soto. Yeah. yeah. So um, their previous uh, officer in charge, I would say, had a much warmer relationship <laughs> with the team leader. <laughs> my character does not we we warmed up to each other but when my character first got there you know, there's some issues mm -hmm. uh and really one of the things that you know the show is trying to do is just to bring some different side of the authenticity of the storytelling uh because yeah. yeah for you know some of the officers they're younger less experienced but they still outrank this person and you know mm -hmm. that's how the, the military works so uh, you know, just a little bit of different storytelling, and you know, I'm I'm glad to to, to be there. Yeah. So, what what kind of research did you do to kind of get into that mindset of like kind of military and all that fun stuff? Well, you know, there's a there's a lot on the net, man. I mean, some mm -hmm. obviously some stuff secretive is you know it's classified. They can't talk about specific missions, but uh, so they they do something called buds. You know, go through specific training to do this job, mm -hmm. and it's not just physical, but it's mental, and it teaches you. That it's not about you, you know, it's no individuals, it is a team, it is about the goal, and it is, a, yeah, about the team. So, um, I just, yeah, I checked out, you know, that stuff. My character, uh, particular, is, is a sniper. Um, there's a guy on the show, Neil Brown Jr., um, mm -hmm. yeah, a great guy. He, he connected me with a, a former SEAL who, oh, man, wow. I feel like he's... <laughs> Maybe my character was based on him because, <laughs> I, yeah, you know, he, he was a former officer in charge. Uh, he's a former sniper. So just, we, you know, so many similarities to the character in him. So uh, I was able to talk to him. And um, I recently finished a book, you know, so it's called No Easy Day by Mark Owen. And so he's one of the people who that got bin Laden. Uh, so mm -hmm. he went on on that mission. So mm -hmm. it was those different things. And so many people on the set are you know former military so and I, I wasn't in the military but as far as like how i stand my clothing everything uh they, they're right there to help me out and my character is very much by the book uh, mm -hmm. which also caused some of the friction between the team <laughs> yeah the team leader and you know uh yeah because he so doesn't he, follow the rules <laughs> that's right <laughs> i don't follow yeah, so <laughs> uh that you know uh my character is very much about the book so yeah. when someone who outranks me is speaking i'd be standing a certain way mm -hmm. you know when uh you know with the seals some things are a bit less formal like for example like their hair they're allowed to have their hair beards and stuff my character is clean shaven uh as you know more of a you know military haircut mm -hmm. so yeah Mike, I want to go back to you said you auditioned a couple times. Uh, I'm just yeah. curious, you know, as as you know, we we talk to actors that are auditioning, self taping. So was it a was it an in person audition? I'm assuming, and and how did it feel? Were you, afterwards, were you like, you know, did, was it like that was great, or you didn't know again, or like I'm just curious that going through it, man. So the re I, I love telling people this story because I want I love to encourage people, uplift, inspire, keep going, tell them to keep going. Uh, so for SEAL team, man, I, or I guess, first of all, uh, so there have been times when, uh, I mean, it could be the weekend, I could be about to go do something and I get the stuff from my agent and with SEAL team, I mean, you've got scenes, they give you a glossary at the, the front of it. It's like at least two pages because you're wow. saying all this military jargon that you're, you're not used to saying. So you need to know what you're talking about. You need yep. to say it as if you say it all the time. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I'm doing it, but I'm, it was always fun. It was always a joy to to get the scenes down to to do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, over the years, I I've, I've been in to the offices. You know what I mean? And I remember when I got back uh, from shooting my uh, my other show that I did in 2019, I had two auditions either in the same week or like back to back, kind of. You know what I mean? Like within two weeks, I got pretty you know quickly. So. I felt good about them, um, which I got into a place in my work that if I feel that the work that I did in my rehearsal showed up, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I don't. I try not to think about getting it, or I just do it for the 
for the love of it, for the fun of it. Um, felt good about it. I remember my reps were like, yeah, well, you know, we, we got a good feeling too. And then, nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> but I've been in the room so many times, you know what yep. I mean? And as you already know, there's a thing called booking the room, mm-hmm. you know? So you just mm-hmm. do your best work. Uh, and so for this one, this is like right when, you know, the pandemic hit. And so this was a tape and I sent that in and my agent hit me back and said, hey, you know, they like you. So you, you'll be working on SEAL Team. And I was like, wow. Mm-hmm. So oh, it was, man. It, it's been a goal for a while. Congrats. Who was reading with you, Mike? Was it someone, a friend or, you know, someone, you know, who, who, who was you? Yeah. I just, curious. yeah. I always have like a family member, a friend, yeah. like, you know, uh, girlfriends over the years, I've yeah. tortured them. <laughs> they to help me, especially when I was like, you know, earlier in the career, man, I'm like yeah. trying to be like a perfectionist and stuff and I, yeah. I do it again. Yeah, man. Any any girlfriend of mine is is an angel. They deserve every award <laughs> because they're just so patient. <laughs> like they're just willing to do it again. And like sometimes if we're about to go to the movies or something, mm-hmm. I'm like, I got to do this. You know, um, I always see it as this: like I can either watch somebody do it, or I can like you know work on doing it myself. Um, yeah. So yeah, I like going to the movies. But if I have an opportunity, I need to give it the time that it needs so I can be prepared. You know, yeah. so. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. I was just thinking about, you know, and I, I'm curious, had, had you played much military stuff before before this at all? A little bit? Or um, no? A little bit. Yeah, okay. I was on NCIS. Uh, okay. I was in the Navy, yeah. I mean, just the reason I, I bring it up, I saw I'm doing a play now, and in the in this play, right. I play like a um, – kind of a guy who's developing pharmaceutical drugs um, for for like for depression. And then what's oh, interesting okay. is and then what's interesting is I just got a an audition for like a recurring part on a show where I play more of a dad, but he's giving he's talking to his son about pharmaceuticals. Corbin Corbin knows this scene. And what's interesting is working on this play on that type of character, dealing with all these like uh, <laughs> um, pharmaceutical terminology in the play yeah. really helped me kind of understand a bit what you're talking about of like having this stuff come off my tongue easily because you're talking about yeah. it all the time which is a similar thing and i always feel like with actors if there's parts you're going to go out for a decent amount like let's say it's military let's say it's a doctor like there it's it's not cheating to be working on that like either before it happens or really nope. digging in you know what i mean because like you can then apply that to the next time when you're like okay we need you you know we need you to feel like you're you understand all this military stuff it's like well i've worked on these military roles so i understand yeah. the cadence and all those things and you just apply it you know what i mean it's yeah. kind of an interesting oh, I, thing absolutely man i mean it, it it uh it shows up you're doing yourself a favor if there's something that you like to play I mean, really, first of all, I, I know you know this too. We don't want to wait for the industry to give us permission to play something. Mm-hmm. You know, we can do a play. We can do indies. We can work on scenes with our friends. And if yeah. it's what you like to do, just be sharpening your skills. So when you get that opportunity, you're good to go. You see what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like yeah. you're doing yourself a favor, yeah. you know, and, and now maybe we can't do that with every opportunity we get. But like, like what you said, there's something that you like to do already. Just, just, just be doing that, and you'll see how those doors just start to, you know, open up. And these things just start to show up for you. Do, so, yeah. do you have any advice yeah. for like a younger you or somebody who is like practical steps to be able to do something like you? You know, you like to do military roles. Should you like hire a, a writer? Like, what, what do you think is the best way to kind of practice that? Um, I would, I would say, so you, you could do that. I mean, you could definitely work with writers and different people who are, who are passionate. You know get those things going but also i mean some of the things that i've done man is just things that i see on tv or film things like that uh yeah just get the the words you know what I mean? <laughs> right out. Out yeah. and just do it yep. do it with a, a mm-hmm. friend or if, if you you know you, you have to if you just buy yourself at that point look at the the material and understand what's going on mm. you know what i mean and just like work from there and but you also get to see the professional finished product of it and just really work to understand what's going on in that scene. Mm. I, I mean, for example, man, I'm a big fan of uh, Denzel Washington, big fan of his work. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I saw a flight, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen it. And yeah. I don't, I don't want to ruin it for anybody who, who possibly hasn't seen it. It's too but late. You he, can ruin it. Okay. <laughs> they, they, they all die. They all die. They all die. If you haven't seen it at this point, then no. yeah. <laughs> uh, when he's talking from beyond the grave, not us. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> When he did that monologue at the it's like the end, I don't mm-hmm. know if you remember that when after mm-hmm. everything had fallen down, yeah. I was like 
two words came out of his mouth. I was like, yeah, I'm doing that. Mm-hmm. I'm doing it. I'm, 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 I got, I have to do this, this, this monologue. Um, and so it's something I just did, you know, for, yeah. for myself that is enjoying it. Uh, even though it's an emotional thing, uh, I just, you know, just to work on it. Um, I did the same thing with, uh, encouraging the fire when he goes to speak to the family, yeah. uh, you know, about the, the friendly fire thing. Um, yeah, so like those are things that you can do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And obviously, if you're passionate about it, that's what's going to drive you to do it in the first place. You know, not to get recognition, not to necessarily show somebody, which it does come in handy. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously in this business to have, <laughs> but just just do stuff like that, man. That that really helps. Yeah, yeah so. I was thinking about that, Mike. One of the things that I I've talked to my my students about is something I call the acting hour, which is a couple of different things they can do like kind of every day. And one of those things yeah. that it's kind of like what you're talking about, which is like watch a performance that like really inspires you. And if you want to transcribe it and then try to do it yourself and either kind of imitate what they're doing or do it your own way, such a great yeah. exercise because it's, it, hopefully you're picking something that you're not like, oh, I'm dreading it. It's like, no, I'm excited. Like yeah. I love, yeah. this gets me like juiced up, you know, because I think that's yeah. an important thing to find, you know, what's exciting about it for you. Um, and work on those parts, you know what I mean? To see what it is that, that, that gets you going, you know? I mean, you really, you have to, man, because uh, just to be honest here, uh, for especially when you first get started, you're not really make. If, if money is your motivation, you probably want to do something else, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, get into real estate. Yeah. If, if people yeah. say they want to make money, go get into real estate. Why, why would yeah. you, don't become an actor. Like if you want money, get, there's much easier ways to make money than this business, for sure. Bro, I agree, like, I agree. Especially like consistently too. Uh, totally, you know, Mary really, Rich, Mary Rich. That's what yeah. I did, just Mary Rich. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> I just get it, I just it's, get it. It's, it's like there's plenty of years when you're rubbing two nickels together, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so those type of things that inspire you, like that's what's really going to help you out, man. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I wanna I wanna go um, kind of a step uh, uh, back. We we'll kind of jump around, but but I know you know you worked on Jupiter's Legacy. Was that kind of your biggest role? up to that point and and how did that come about man because that was super cool man. like just to, yeah yeah so this has got to be a fun yeah. just world and story yeah yeah so i'm curious yeah about jupiter's legacy yeah with with josh dumel and that whole thing yeah yeah man such an amazing cast uh that i had the privilege to work with uh you know these, these veteran actors uh so obviously i'm working with them but if i'm you know if i'm not you know on camera if they're doing something else in the scene and i'm there i get to see how they do their thing mm-hmm. you know because there's you know, there's acting in class and things like that, but then there's also, you know, uh, real world like there doing. Yeah. And so uh, I consider it a privilege to, to to witness people who've done this for so long. You know, they have so much experience. So uh, the way that came about, man, my, my agent sent me the material and I was like, wow, this is amazing. You know, just that first episode and, you know, my, my sides. And so, yeah, I went in. Uh, my agent said, "Hey, you know, casting responded to your, you know, your 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 your, uh, your uh, appointment. Cool things that we've heard before. You know, it's all good." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was about a week later. You know, you, you got your call back. Uh, Stephen Denight, the original showrunner, was in the room, and uh, uh, another producer, uh, Brooke, was there, and you had the woman who was who was reading with me, and then you had Denise, who was the uh, the casting director, just kind of sitting off to the side and. Those kind of things could get you nervous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you could. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> yes, we, but um, that's where training and, and rehearsing and just really having it in your body comes into play because, yeah, you do get excited. You do get the nerves. Mm-hmm. But um, your training is what's going to save your butt. Mm-hmm. Your, the preparation is what's going to save you because yeah. then you can just go ahead and go in there and be free with it. You know, yep. my uh, my acting, the head of the studio that I graduated from, uh, Joanne, she always tells us, you should know your lines so well that if you get hit by a car, you can still say them. <laughs> <laughs> because when you walk into that room uh, or even on set, those nerves may hit you so hard, you feel like you got hit by a car, mm-hmm. you know? Yes. So, uh, this, Mike, you know, you know what's, you know what's not, you know, what's, this is honestly not ironic. And I want to get back to Jupiter's legacy, but I was biking back from the gym in Hollywood and I got hit by a car and oh I swear to God, I got hit by a car 
I, I, I smashed the front windshield. An ambulance came. I was like, I don't need it. I had an audition for Pretty Little Liars later that day. Uh, Corbin, Brian Holdman, who yeah, we yeah. interviewed on this show, helped get me that audition. Uh, and I was way out of it. I probably should not have gone. I don't know if I knew my lines. Maybe it wasn't good enough then, Mike. <laughs> but that was a wild, that was a wild. And then the thing that happened, uh, uh, <laughs> I got some money from it because I got hit by this woman. Yeah. And I yeah. used that money for my engagement ring for my wife and oh, so nice. i like to say that it's a blood diamond but it was my blood mike it was my yeah, blood so it was it's good, a blood yeah. diamond so it's all good so it worked out and he got a bigger <laughs> ring because it, and he got a bigger ring because i was like almost knocked unconscious so um i like that in practicality man that was that was rough um but i want to jump back to um uh that so you went in uh casting directors there you're reading it's feeling good for yeah. the callback yeah and that was my second um oh you know what i'm glad you you uh I'll bring this up too in a second. That was my. That Glad was my I made it breeze. about me. You gave you, you, you <laughs> yeah. let you think about something. Okay. Okay. Back no, to Mike. Actually, back to Mike. You actually yeah. made me think of something that uh, before I got the opportunity for this, I sat down and was thinking. Okay, so what is it that I really like to play? What do I really want to play? What do I believe that I'm seen as? Mm. Uh, people typically see me as like you know, good guy, hero. Those are the things that I typically go out for. Um, so okay, so what what is it? You know, do I need to do to look? that way um and that's what you know once again joanne always tells us you need to look how you know your type looks so if you're like a good looking person a fit person work out as part of your job to be in shape you don't want to have to get in shape when you get an opportunity you need to already be that mm -hmm. and so before i got that i just kind of had a moment where i was like right, man this is time to just turn things up so i started hitting the gym more. i put on a little bit more size and uh, I remember when I was leaving, uh, I don't remember when I came around, I left it. So Steven was like, okay, I could definitely see you in a super suit. Cause I put, you know, a bit, a bit of size on. And then yeah. uh, when I was leaving my first audition, some dude was like, hey, bro, you been hitting the gym? I was laughing, but that was part of the role too. You know, it's just mm -hmm. that. You know, like like what you said. You know, if you, if you play military, if you do this, that, yeah, start to prepare before so that way you don't have to feel like you need to catch up. You yep. know what I mean? So all those ways that you can look the part, yep. that that helps you. Uh, except unless you're like a drug addict, you don't really want to do that. No, don't know? do you, that. Get off the heroin, Corbin. Yeah. Corbin, get off the heroin. Yeah. This is why I don't work uh, out. Corbin wins every time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Hey, Corbin, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, he doesn't really work out either. So you're that's good. Right, that's, that's your, yeah, that's, that's, that's your, that's you, my he's role. got a good career. He's got a good career. <laughs> yeah, he's like a sarcastic, <laughs> he's like a sarcastic, he's like if Chandler from Friends and Joseph Gordon-Levitt had a baby, that's yeah, Corbin. That's me. Mike, just so you know. So that's a pretty good career. That. That's a it's pretty a good, good career. career. You know, I'm not mad yeah. at it. <laughs> that's your new tagline. I, I just, I just came up with that. So, um, uh, then, okay. So playing like, kind of like, uh, I mean, playing a superhero and then jumping on set. How was that experience, Mike? I mean, how many how many episodes was it? And and you know, uh, it, you know, that's exciting for, to for hear Jupiter's, about. Yeah, I was in seven of eight. Nice. Um, and it was just you know, a dream come true. Some of the people always say, but but really, it is, man. I mean, I'm not saying I know everything about him, but Superman's you know, uh, my guy. I've, I've always yeah. loved Superman. Uh, I knew that I would like to play a superhero, so I was like, this yeah. is amazing. But my character was also you know highly intelligent. Love to read, you know, kind of became a doctor as well. Cool. Um, but, but so yeah, this happened within like maybe a couple weeks' time. Mm -hmm. I got the audition. A week later, I had to call back yeah. to, you know, show running producer in the room. That next week, I'm at the gym and I'm running, and then I, I see my agent call. Oh, okay, so I answer. You. You know, Michael's on the, on the phone. And Mike, and can we also, be honest? When our agent calls yeah. and we're waiting for a job, it's more exciting than like when our parents call or something, a friend. You know what I mean? We're like, oh, this yeah. is exciting. This is going to be good news, hopefully. I'll right? pick this one up. Yeah, I'll pick this one up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they call. So yeah. I, I hear, you know, Michael's on the phone. Uh, and then I hear Joanne, too. Joanne is also the name of my uh, my manager. Okay. And so I've, I've, as far as like my, my agents go, there's, like, there's a few of them. I think maybe one more person might have been. On there. I think maybe Kieran was on the line too. Mm -hmm. And they're all on the phone. And I'm like, usually with you yeah. know, if more if more than one's on the phone, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I remember when mm -hmm. I first my first job that I booked with uh, with Michael, uh Joanne and Michael were on the phone. And I'm like, okay. And so this time I'm on the treadmill. And I, I'm pretty sure I at least slowed down. And then Michael, you know, they're like, hey, 
you got it, man. And I was like, whoa, okay, let me get off this trip. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and then Joanne's like, uh, what she say? She said, yeah, 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 we want you to get hurt. <laughs> get off that trip. And then Michael's like, no, no, keep working out. <laughs> you you got to be strong. So, yeah, exactly. So <sighs> we were we were just laughing about that. And, um, you know, they were just, man, we're, we're so happy for you. And congratulations. And, you know, my, you know the whole team. Yeah. We just uh, really congratulate me, man. So, uh, and, and for that show, you know, we had a, a personal trainer. And, uh, yeah, so I just continued, you know, with the, with the workouts and all that stuff. And you know filming so yeah awesome how was That's, being was, how was being in costume was that cool to like kind of put oh, like man. Don on that cape and <laughs> it's funny. well I, my, my character was the one one of the ones who didn't have yeah, a yeah, cape yeah. uh <laughs> but those super suits are hot man yeah they are hot <laughs> like i mean you are sweating like crazy man <laughs> and you look really big and powerful but in, in all actuality you need somebody to help you get in and out of that thing mm -hmm. so you know god forbid you gotta go to the bathroom <laughs> 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 you are dependent you're dependent on somebody to help you do a very basic thing that's so funny. um yeah man um but w w all that being said it was just really a fantastic experience like seriously every part of it man um mm -hmm. it's based on a comic you know jupiter's legacy by mark miller and yeah. i mean it's just a, an amazing amazing comic yeah so mike i have a question for you when you're on set hmm what for people that maybe haven't been on set as much or on bigger sets what advice would you give someone who's on set and they're you know around people with experience and things like that you know i mean i and i think it could, it could start with you know being prepared or you know taking yeah. it all in or you know having good energy or kind of knowing when to you know be chatty and when not to i'm just curious kind of when you after spending some time on set because i think that's a it's always a really big thing for an actor where they get on set which is awesome but then when you're on set multiple days that's also a different yeah. experience you know what i mean then if you're like coming in for one day or something because you know it's a family coming together but when you're together for longer times you know certain things i think you kind of realize or come together any, any thoughts on on that well, absolutely man um well first I, I guess i'll start with what i've learned in my acting schools uh you know because my, my first uh you know, professional acting training. I didn't really get started until college. Uh, first professional acting coach was Howard Fine. Mm -hmm. um, and we know he doesn't play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's very serious, mm -hmm. which is what's going to help you get a job and keep it. People, <laughs> feel like, people feel like, oh, you know, all these rules. All right, well, if you want to get fired, once you finally get this opportunity, you're so, don't take this the wrong way, but you're so easily replaceable. Mm -hmm. So don't do those basic things that will get make you see the exit. Yeah. Number one, don't have your phone go off. Mm. You don't want to be that person. You don't want to mm -hmm. be that person. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and when I was at Howard Fine, uh, if your phone went off, you had to leave. Really? <laughs> he wasn't joking. Yeah, you had to leave the class. Yeah, you're, you're out for that day. Yeah. I remember this. This is burned in my brain. Yeah, this is back in the day when we had to, you know, you could take the battery out, which is what I ended up doing after <laughs> witnessing what I saw. So we're, and so this is this big moment for me because this is my first professional acting class. We're all on the stage. Like we're probably like sitting in a circle or so, you know, actor stuff. So doing introductions, I'm like, and to me, it's just so special because it's what I always wanted to do. You know what I mean? So of course I'm not going to be low on my phone because like, this is like what I always wanted to do in my life. And I finally got the courage to go for it. So we're sitting in class, first day, and then somebody's phone goes off. Howard says, oh, okay, well, this is my opportunity to tell you. You know, everybody turn off your phone. Phone goes off, you got to leave. All right, everybody does what you got to do. Um, I'm pretty sure I probably took my, my battery out at that point, uh, dating myself. And so um, this, late, this young lady's uh, phone goes off after he made the announcement. He's like, well, you know, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to leave. She said, oh, I didn't know. Sorry, you, you got to go. And because it was the first day, she had to wait for the next class to start because the other rule was you can't miss the first day. You know, oh. exactly. And you know what I'm saying? So I was mm -hmm. like, wow. So some people may feel like that's a lot, but what if you're on a, uh, on a set and your phone goes off and they say, hey, you're fired. Yeah. <laughs> Which is worse, you know what I mean? So people may take that as he's being mean, but no, he's, he's helping you out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He's giving you the medicine you need to take, which yeah, we don't like taking cough medicine but you got to take it you know mm -hmm. and um, so that's first and foremost uh, be on time be prepared 
Um, we were talking about the chatty stuff with people. Know that they hired you for a reason. They hired you because they believe that you can do the job. Uh, I mean, for one, they're investing in you because uh, production costs money by every moment. So that's another reason you want to be prepared. But getting chatty with people and if, if you feel like, you know, if I talk this guy up or this woman up, they're going to help me. You don't need that. You don't need it. I know it's easier said than done, but just be confident in yourself that you did the work, that they hired you for a reason, they, that they, you know, out of all the actors that they look at, they hired you. So you earned it, right? Mm -hmm. You're where you're supposed to be at. Don't try to rush the process. You know what I mean? The things that we learn along the way are what's going to help us get to the next level and to stay where we're at. So you don't need to rush it. You're not in a rush. Just enjoy the moment you're in and just, just keep going. Um, what else is there that I would say? Um, your attitude. Have a, have a, have a, um, have a, a good attitude. Um, so I've, I've, wor I've definitely worked jobs I didn't like. You know, I used to work uh, at a car auction. I used to work loading trucks. I used to uh, wash cars. <laughs> I used to... Uh, you just don't like cars. Right <laughs> yeah. It's all about you know, cars. I walk everywhere. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> So I've, I've had jobs that I didn't like, man. But you know what helped me out? Uh, I I, start, uh, I think I read a, this book. I think I got it from this particular book called Think and Grow Rich. Or um, That's one of the books that I read. Um, but I, I, I sought to add value to mm -hmm. things versus, oh, what can you give me? What can you give me? Because um, I noticed that, like, with, say, like one of those jobs that nobody really wants to work, sometimes people will be like, oh, let me walk slow so I can milk the clock. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and you're seeking to take versus what can I give? And once mm -hmm. I really started to digest that idea, things started to really open up for me. You know, not to say that I was like, you know, so much like that anyway. But once I really started to get that idea in my body, like, how can I, you know, like, let me be on time. Let me, when they say, hey, guys, we're, we're going back to work, get up, go. Mm -hmm. No, oh, let me, no, you know what I mean? And I carry that type of thinking with me to this arena, which I love. So when they say, hey, Mike, they ain't got to finish a sentence. I'm ready to go film <laughs> again go. anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. that is, it's our attitude, along with being talented, along with being skilled, you know, having training is really going to help you out. Trust me. Because I've had producers pull me aside from different jobs. Hey, man, we, I want you to know I recognize your attitude. Like, you know what I mean? You you know, you have, people like being around you. Just want to let you know that we appreciate that. And I go, oh, wow, I was trying to be what I feel is decent. And mm -hmm. it, it helps so much because I think, you know, for like, for Jupiter's, I was uh, out of town for like six months working on that, you know? So who do people want to go work with? Uh, you know, somebody that they really don't want to be around, like somebody who's kind of a jerk or somebody who like, yeah, we this person elevates the situation when they walk into the room just by being, decent to people you know what i mean you don't have to like you know manufacture stuff just you know you know just be a, be a decent person and that, that helps you so much so so much yeah. well i i was thinking when you said that um attitude gives us gratitude Corbin, mm. write that down. That's fucking good. That's good. I don't know where that came from. Look at Mike. Mike almost did a spit take. Did we catch that, Corbin? Did we catch we did, that? We did. It's like philosophy with comedy, don't Mike. That's how I. Don't that's encourage. how I give you the film. Thank you. No, Mike. Keep laughing. Attitude gives. Like, that's so good. That's so good. I should be on a bumper sticker. Um. Yeah, it, it uh, does. Yeah. <clears throat> but what I was gonna say about that. Speaking of attitude, one of the reasons I wanted Mike on the show was because of his attitude from the film we did a long, long time ago. Mm. Um, that's how Mike stood out to me. And so you've had that ad great attitude, that smile, that energy mm. since I've known you. And like, I mean, what's cool about that and what I really think is, is wonderful about you is, you know, I was thinking about that, like when we like someone, why would we not want to help them? But if the talent isn't there, if the work hasn't been there, it's kind of yeah. for not, you know? And mm -hmm. so I think the idea yeah. is like, yeah, you can be a great likable person, which is awesome. But then when the talent gets there, that's when the stuff starts to take off because it's like, great. It's someone with, that's awesome. They got a good attitude. They're ready to go. And also they're crushing it, you know, the work wise, yeah. you know, with the role and those two combined things, I think is like what really, um, it's something I remember, you know, about when I first met you that stuck with me. Um, and I love that to hear that, that you're, that you still got that mindset and that mentality. I love it, Mike. I love it. I 
I appreciate it, man. Um, I think also too, like a lot of it was just like, you know, being raised a certain way, but like once I was able to read it in certain books, I started yeah. to understand it more and you can see how it helps you. And, and you're 100% right, man. Somebody could be um, a nice person or, you know, like doing that type of thing, right? But yeah, you gotta be talented too. And not only talented, but skilled. So yeah. like I remember, uh, you know, uh, with with jo- at Joanne's uh, at, at Baron Brown, my my uh, school I graduated from, they say, yeah, you know, you have your natural talent, but we're helping you to uh, to give it form and everything like that. You don't want it to just be raw and all over the place because we're within a certain medium and you know we're telling the story, so the audience has to be able to digest that, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's what they uh, that's what they really taught us is 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 the skill too, the training what's going to really help to hone that so that yeah. you know you can do this type of thing so. and, and yeah with all this too it's like i think an, another layer that we are dancing around too is it, you seem to be very good at making close relationships with people very quickly and like networking and kind of mm-hmm. doing that whole thing and it's like how do you how do you stay on people's mind like how do you is it just being a good person do you have do you have any like plan with that or is it just uh, i try to just be authentic man mm-hmm. i remember I remember uh, when I was in in, um, in, in in training, this is something that came to mind right now. A friend was like, oh, you should try to get on like Joanne's radar, this and that. And, mm-hmm. and I was like, I, I mean, I get what she was saying, but I just decided to focus on the work, man. That's what my gut was telling me. And thankfully, Joanne noticed me anyway, because Joanne was the head of the studio. Mm-hmm. And so she didn't teach like, you know, like normal classes, she would teach them, like she teaches like a master class, but her husband, DW, he's my second year teacher. Uh, you know, I had other instructors, you know, first and second year, uh, or, or first year, I should say, second year was all DW, I believe. So um, I would say just be authentic and just, um, you know, do the work, stay connected to your love of the work. And that's what's worked for me. Um, I maybe sometimes don't promote myself as much as other people do or other people sure. say that. That's said, why you're but, here. Check out Mike Wade, uh, the man. Yeah. I'll promote you. I'll be your Boom. hype man. <laughs> Boom. I'll be yes. your hype man. That's what it is. <laughs> um, yeah, so, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I'm just saying that. That's, that's yeah. pretty much it, man. Just try to do the best work, be be excellent. You know, yeah. uh, that's what I feel is, is work for me. Is Yeah. So, like that. I love that. Oh my god! Hey, you know it's funny. One time though, uh, I was working on a scene where I'm like talking to this guy. We're supposed to be like at a, like a basketball court or something like playing there or whatever. And uh, I think in the scene it was supposed to be a siren or something like that. I was basically telling him to stay on the right track so he doesn't get like in jail or you know go to jail. And uh, but what actually happened was the helicopter, like the police helicopter, started flying, and I just used it. I just kind of oh, nice. up, like you know what I mean, like <laughs> and it's like. <laughs> Love that. Use it, bro. Yeah, yeah. man. Um, I love that. It actually that. happened to me on my, my first, uh, my, sorry, I got a Taff Harley to the union because I'm fucking awesome. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> so I got, I got, I got, uh, I did, uh, you know, yeah, I got my first SAG film, man. So it was a scene between me and who was going to even end up being my wife in a movie. And one of the producer's phone went off, but at that moment, there was supposed to be music. So somebody just called them at that moment and you just use it, you know what I mean? So yeah. like those are the things that they teach you with training that mm-hmm. you just keep going. Don't let anything stop you. They always tell you cut, you stay within it. Did you, you tell them the mean? printer story? No, no, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favorites, go ahead. Go um, ahead. Yeah, I was, in, I was in class with John. It was early on my first beginning of ever acting. And then the printer just yeah. started, like I was, just doing the scene and the printer's like and just self-cleaning and just doing the most like i've never heard a printer make <laughs> such so loud. a loud noise before and it still hasn't since <laughs> and then yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just it happened to me then and i just ignored it and then john was like no make a comment on it be annoyed yeah, you, like, by it <laughs> like did you i said did you hear the printers like yeah it was obnoxious i was like we all did we like 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 it was impossible to ignore yeah. it was so loud i was like yeah. you know if you can you know like incorporate it you know sometimes it comp- sometimes it doesn't work but if it does yeah. you know if you can do that they'll they'll love you you know what i mean or they'll just oh, be like dude. oh my right you know it's like it's yeah they, they absolutely love it yeah I, I you know that's corbin that's what i'm talking about like uh, sometimes i say oh, like fun. happy accidents if you mm-hmm. have a happy accident and a way to to use it you know um 
you know, there's a famous one with Brando on the waterfront where um, the actress he's uh -huh. with drops her glove, right? And he picks it up. You see her reach for it. He doesn't give it to her. He puts it on his own hand <laughs> and plays with it. And then he gives it back to her. But like, that was not, you know, it's just a happy, she dropped her glove on accident, but I love that. And mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, it's great to, great to hear that. And I think that, you know, it, being open to it, you know, it doesn't always, always work out. I mean, I remember I was in a commercial audition once and the, the actress like dropped something and I was trying to think of something witty to say and nothing was working. And it's just like the whole audition just, just it actually, it, it was a bad accident. It was like, it just got worse and worse. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we tried to, we tried to pull it out. So I remember, yeah. I remember one time on set the somebody's emergency, you know, like the Amber Alert thing on your phone, Oh, shit. even though yeah. they were muted, that still goes through. So that's something oh, to know right. to keep that's your phone off, not silent. That, that's what, that's what I was yeah, going to say too, man. Uh, I mean, for only like now, I I still don't usually don't do it, but I leave, I usually leave my phone in a trailer, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unless mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. expecting like my reps to call me or something like that, mm -hmm. I uh, you know I'll take it with me then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, cause yeah, we our, our attention span. We want our attention to be where we're at, man. And plus, too, a lot like when I was in Jupiter's, uh, the the young the younger version of my character there no cell phones at that time. What am I doing with a cell yeah, phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I'm in these old period clothes, and then I'm just going here with an iPhone. Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah, I'm so, here. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so. but also, if you're if you're doing something that you love, well, unless there's an emergency, what do you what do you need the cell phone for in a certain sense? I mean, I know we we don't. No one wants to be bored. I totally get that. But it's like. You know, if you're at that place, you know, like I, I, I like to shoot hoops in the morning. It's like meditative for me. And I just turn off my phone. I'm like, yeah. I can check those messages in an hour. And I, I know we have that tendency, but I, I love hearing you say that, Mike, because I think it's like, well, if you're on set and you're working on a show and it's where you want to be, it's like, yeah, you can turn that phone off. Or if you're in acting class, you can turn the phone off for three hours, you know, unless you're, you're waiting on something super important. And then, okay, I get that. But like, most of the time we're not. Most of the time we're just checking it kind of out of boredom and stuff. And I, and I think yeah. that is... There's something that is, um, you know, this idea of like almost like deep concentration or kind of going deep into it versus like, okay, go a little bit deep and then I'm gonna like, gotta keep myself stimulated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think that's, you know, and that, that happens when people get sides too. When I wish oh, people yeah. would really record how much they work on sides in a sense, because I feel like it's like, oh, I did hard 10 minutes and then I'm like, I need to take, need to go do this. Let me, and I need to like, let me Instagram. This, you know? <laughs> yeah, let me Instagram. <laughs> let me get it. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it is, it's human nature in a sense, but you got to be able to fight against that. And I, I found the more you can attack stuff, uh, you know, I mean, I know procrastination makes sense, but the more you can attack it right away, Corbin and I were just talking about this and saying, okay, this is important to me. Mm -hmm. I can either do it now or I can do it three days from now. I've got the time now. Let's set aside that time. Let's block off that time. Let's work on it, you know, and get into it because you're excited about it. It's what you want to do. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a no, a no brainer, you know, if it's what you want to be doing. Right. I yeah. And just, and just, just being present, man, is such a big deal, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, and, and when you're on the set, yeah. I mean, like just, just be, be mindful of what we're doing mm -hmm. and how powerful our, our attention and our, our mind is. So if I'm on a set, you know, what I want my mind to be on, you, know, you have that opportunity to make sure you really understand the scenes that you're in. I mean, you can bring a book, you can bring a magazine, but our phones demand so much of our attention. I think when we're mindful of that, um, it, it, it helps, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, and yeah, I, I find that a lot of times, like I'll be working on my stuff and I'm like, I'm gonna give myself a break, but then my brain goes right back to it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, because you because you, you love it mm -hmm. so you want to yeah. do things that you love you know um there's something to be said too about our, our time the talk okay another thing i wanted to add was we talked about like attitude right we talked about this previously attitude gives you gratitude yeah go ahead <laughs> yeah, there you go <laughs> go ahead yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so i remember one time uh one of my reps you know from the agent sent me something and it was about maybe seven o'clock at night and then the, the, the read was the next morning about maybe 11 ish. Right. Yeah. So what happened? Those nerves, our brain starts saying this stuff, honestly, man. And now, yeah, now what's humanly possible and what's possible for that person at that moment, those are very valid things. Mm -hmm. But what our brain tends to do is puts that fear in us and, and, and it'll start to kind of, it'll start to mold into an excuse. Oh man, why did they why did they send me this at this time? They should have given me more time. And I, that's your brain starting to give you excuses. 
Yeah. Uh, and I and I know brain does the same thing. Uh, before I booked Jupiter's, I was working at Kaiser at a, at a hospital mm -hmm. uh, doing plays for, you know, doctors and nurses and stuff. Yeah. And so, I'm, you know, I'm around actors and, and, I, and I, I get it. Like, you know, we start to say that. How come this? How come that? And I remember when I got this particular audition, brain starts. And but then something else said, well, you know what? You have X amount of hours to get this done. You can spend it complaining or you can spend it preparing. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Somebody's mm -hmm. going to get this job. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It could be you. So what, what are you going to spend your time doing? So I was yeah. like, all right, man, I'm, I'm not thinking of that stuff. And yeah, the thoughts are going to try to come, creep back in. But then, you know, you, you stay tied to what you're doing and why you're doing it. You know, that's first year acting school, that's what he taught us. Elaine taught us, have a solid reason for being here or you're going to quit. So, like, th that helps, man. Mike, that's I also think lot. sometimes sometimes if you get sides like that and you, like, for at least for me, I read them, like, two or three times. I'm like, I don't know this. I don't know any of this. And then I stress and I'm like, well, I've spent 10 minutes on it. Like, I shouldn't <laughs> know any of it yet. I mean, <laughs> you spend, just got it. Yeah, <laughs> spend three hours. And then if you still don't know it, then you're in trouble. But the point is, yeah, you just yeah. got it. But like, sometimes you feel that way. You know, you're just like, I don't know. You know, it's, yeah. it's eight pages. I don't know. It's like, well, you haven't spent any time on it either. So it's like, yeah. spend some time on it. And, and sometimes that does feel, can feel rushed. But I think you're totally right. It's that idea of like, well, where do you want to put your energy? You know, do you want to put your energy complaining? You know, do you want to put your energy being helpful? You know, how, where do you want to send that energy? You know, and, and I think that's, that's, that's a big, you know, that's a big lesson I've learned is like, um, I've got energy. I like to use it. And it's like, I like to channel into the right stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and figuring out what that is, um, is really, really important, you know, and whether that's my family, whether that's basketball, whether that's acting, whether that's teaching, um, you know, I've found, uh, you know, I was even thinking with, with this play, Mike, like opening night, I went out for like a little bit after opening night. I had like, I don't know, I, not that much. I haven't been drinking really at all. So I had like a glass and a half of wine. And the next day was Saturday and I had a show that night and I woke up, I was like, oh, I'm a little like, just like lightweight, like super lightweight. And I was like, you know what though? I didn't even like feeling a little bit off for me. I'm realizing yeah. during the run. And so I haven't, after the shows, I've just been chatting with people, which I love and then going home. And so for me, yeah. I've like prioritized I want to feel good for for the show in the next day you know i want to get up in the morning and work out things like that i prioritize that yeah. that's where my energy is going it's not as much yeah. going to other things and i think that has been helpful mm -hmm. you know absolutely because we what we put our time energy attention into we're creating we, we may not be aware of it but that's what we're doing you know what i mean if you yeah. spend your time in the gym yeah you're creating that you know so it just actually is very practical yeah. you know and we have that control we're just typically not conscious of it. Mm -hmm, and yeah. so we're kind of just bopping around, but we could just, you know, recognize that, oh, okay, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this. And yeah. then you see how what you actually wanted or said that you wanted starts to show up, you know, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. and that's really what it is, man. And, and I, and I, I want to say, I actually ended up booking that job too. You did. Uh, oh, nice. I ended, up, I ended up booking it, man. Um, so, you know, we sometimes thinking, oh, this is so last minute that no, I, I, I went on one call and I booked it. It was a Shonda Rhimes show. It was, it was a guest star for something, but it was something I was really connected to, ended up being connected to. And uh, yeah, so. Mike, before our final thing, we, so we met on a movie called uh, Ricky uh, Corbin, which I showed you uh, the, the thing for with, I got to give a shout out to our boy, Matt Markey, my boy, Matt Markey. That's right. Uh, Maddie Merlot. Maddie, awesome. Maddie Merlot, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any any um, memories uh, uh, from that at all, um, Mike, that, that stick out from you? I just am curious. Oh, I dude. <laughs> that was that was so fun because some of that stuff was ad lib too. Like, uh, Mike, what, Mike played I mean, a bouncer, right? You were a bouncer, right? You were the bouncer, yeah. yeah. And um, and I played a character that had all this terrible acne. And uh, <laughs> did you make fun of it, Mike? I can't remember. I feel like you and I got I think, to like talk shit the whole time or something like that. I think I, I think what, what was I, it? I think I think what I remember what it? I said. Uh, I yeah, said what'd you say? Holy moly, pass the guacamole. With a face like that, you must never get laid. I bet she go in there and get a nice tall glass of crater aid. <laughs> you still know it. <gasps> oh my gosh. How yeah, did I have a feeling you'd remember that? It was oh, so I good, didn't know Corbin. I it, man. Dude, I did not know. Mike, that I was impressive. That was impressive. <laughs> yeah, that was lyrical. 
<laughs> that was beautiful. It was so good. Way. It was so yeah. good. I hated it. They put all this terrible acne on me. You know, I feel for people with acne, and they put all this because it was based on a real friend of Matt Markey's. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I had all this. Yeah. And then we went up to the bouncer, and I'm like giving him, you know, giving him, giving him, giving him shit. And then he comes back with that, and it was so good, Corbin. It was so good. It was so good. Yeah. Um, yeah oh man, that's great. That was exactly what I was what I was looking for. I appreciate that. So that was wild. Um, so we have one final segment, Mike. We're not going to let you go. Right. We call it your, your best, best bad, bad acting. acting. <laughs> so we're going to do, we're going to put a fun, I mean, you kind of already just gave us a great quote. That could be right. it. But, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, 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 but this is... <laughs> so funny uh but we're gonna give you a fun one from a kind of a, a fa obviously a famous uh, not obviously a famous movie you don't have to do it the way they did it in the movie you can have your own take on it you can do it accent you can do it big small however you want the idea is just to all have right. fun with it do bad acting and then we might give you a, a redirect so whenever right, whenever cool. you're ready cool is it going um uh... Is it gonna pop up? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. It should be on your I chat. Send it, in, yeah. send it in the chat. Okay. Yeah. I send it in the chat. All right. I was like, wait, wait, wait. We thought you were setting up your moment. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. Like he's, go he's like oh, breathing, and I was like, all right, he's good. He's ready. He's getting prepared. He's professional. All right. All right. My mama always said, mm -hmm. "Life is like a box <laughs> of chocolates. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get." <laughs> Woo! Oh yeah! I like I it. Never know what you're Different gonna get. Different twist. I like it. <laughs> Corbin, you gotta you gotta redirect. I uh, yeah. I kind of want to. I want to see the military. I want to see. I want to see that guy. I want to see a very stoic and just Ooh. and uh, yeah, just yeah. stoic. Okay. My mom always said, "Life is like a box of chocolates." Yeah. You never know what you're gonna get. I had to throw the Denzel. Yeah, 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 yeah. I felt <laughs> that. Yeah. I know the Denzel. I saw it. I saw it. That was okay, good. Okay, all right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Love it. Oh my gosh. Mike, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna channel. Uh, let's channel Ricky. Let's channel Ricky. Oh, no. All right. Let's. Oh, let's the, uh, uh, yeah, you want to yeah. be actually? You want to actually be Ricky or? or no, or, no. You be your, be be your character from that. Be be that Ronaldo. guy. Be that be, guy. Be Mr. Yeah. Guacamole. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Guacamole. Yeah, I gotta find how that rhymes. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't think it's gonna rhyme. But yeah. yeah, I don't. Well, let me let me see what comes with yeah, that. Yeah, uh, yeah. My mom always said life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get, <laughs> but with some craters like that, you need to split. <laughs> <laughs> I had to rhyme it, man, because, you know, Ronaldo, he, he always spoke and rhymed. So, yeah. oh, he totally did. Oh, my God. That was great. That was great. Oh my. Way to go, Mike. Mike, way to go, man. That's. I think this is our first rhyming one. It's so much fun when people do something new. I love it. Yeah. Mike, this has been amazing, man. Yes. It's so great. It's yeah. so great to see your success. We're, you know, we're really, you, I'm really happy for you. It's so cool that we, like... You know, it's one of those things where you 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 meet people and they're like, you know, part of your life for a bit, and then they're they're like not as much a part of your life, but you're still keeping track of them and you know following you yeah. on social media and what you're doing. And I'm just I'm so happy for you, man. I see you putting in the work and and sticking to it. So I'm I'm really I'm really pr proud of you, in the sense that I'm happy for you, man. I hey man, I I 100% appreciate that. You know. Um, I forgot your quote, but gratitude is something. <laughs> Attitude uh, gets you gratitude. Yeah, gratitude, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for every moment, man. I recognize yeah. every day how, uh, yeah. how fortunate I am, man. And, uh, and, and, and congrats to you. I'm proud of you. You know, I've seen you in plenty of commercials, and, and uh, specifically this, man. I listened to a couple of the episodes and um, some great reminders for people who've been in the business and for people who are who are newer to it. Uh, it's really helpful, man. And I'm somebody who didn't know anybody when I first got in. So this type of thing is, is so helpful and so vital, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. you save people time, yeah. you know. They totally, Mike. I was the go. same way. I really didn't know anybody. And you're so hungry, you know, you're so hungry just yeah. to hear stories and, and to meet people and get going and
You know, I always joke that like everyone, when you ask them, well, how long you've been in LA? They're always like, oh, two years, even if they've been here seven years, because everybody <laughs> wants to be further along. That's why they lie about it. Like, yeah. they're like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, like yeah. it's like, but, but the point is because you, you, you're, you're hungry. So you're like, I want to keep, you know, and it, and it takes, it takes some time. It takes some time. I mean, I was, it's funny. One of the questions I was going to ask is like, what were your day jobs, which you mentioned, but mm -hmm. for everyone, they need to find, you know, what are those day jobs that are getting you by as you're training, as you're learning? Cause it, it doesn't, doesn't happen super quick for 99.9% .9 of the people, you know? And so you got to figure it, out, you know, how to sustain it, you know? So it, it, it really doesn't man. And one thing that helped me was to first realize that, yeah, this is a business yeah. predominantly. Yeah. It's a business. Yeah. We're artists. We want to do all that. And yeah, stay connected to that. But it's a business for the people who are hiring you it is a business and they are investing, investing in you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it takes time. One thing that helped me was I looked at, some people's resumes and I saw like maybe about a 10 year time span. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, so it probably takes about that amount of time before people say, Oh, who's this new actor? And I knew mm -hmm. that they're, they're just new to you. And totally. 10 years in this business, you're still a baby. Yep, you're yep. still just getting started, man. So don't yep. try to rush it. Just, nope. you know, I told yeah, Corbin no. his career is probably going to kick in around 62. So he's got a little <laughs> bit of time to wait. <laughs> it's going to take a little bit of time. You know the, the pace he's at, you know, the turtle pace, yeah, he's going to yeah, get yeah. there. I'm going to get there eventually. Slow and steady wins slow the race. Slow and steady. Man. Slow and steady. Hey, man, you might, you might be on that Morgan Freeman track. So <laughs> that, Morgan, you know, that's true. Driving his days was his first thing, but he was on the electric company in his 20s. Yeah. So, you know, it and, might and be it is what it is. I yeah. like it. I like it. It's all good. Well, man. Mike, we don't want to take up any more of your valuable time, man. This is so great. Thank you. We're going to check out, you know, SEAL Team. So excited oh, so that you're good. on there, man. You know, keep that thing yeah. rolling. Um, and thank you so much for taking the time. We really, really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you for having me, man. It's all good right. to see you again. It's nice to be Corbin. Yeah, good yeah. to meet you. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. All have right, have cool. a great day. Talk to you later. Thanks, all right, you too. Thank you. All right. Peace. Thanks again for listening to another episode of the Moving Spotlight Podcast. Hey, everyone. Corbin and I did our, we were our guests on our first podcast yeah. uh, called Actors Inspiration with Amber Wegner. Actors Inspiration. Uh, check it out. Uh, it was really, really fun. We both got to answer a bunch of questions mm -hmm. and chat with Amber, who's a sweetheart. And we're going to have her on the show. Um, yeah, it was great. It was yeah, a great time, wasn't it, Corbin? Such a great time. She was so, her podcast is amazing. Please check it yeah. out. She's so fun and so inspirational <laughs> yep she's got great energy too so yeah, yeah. and also uh like and subscribe on all of our stuff we are on instagram we're on youtube uh just find us at the moving spotlight we're excited we see we have international people listening which is super exciting for us so we just we're enjoying the podcast growing and growing thanks everybody thanks for listening thanks thank you for listening to the moving spotlight podcast